Six months ago, today, a retired neurosurgeon by the name of Ben Carson announced he would seek the Republican nomination for president. His pitch? Well, as a doctor, he has the remedy for America's problems. Now it appears America is taking the doctor's advice to heart. Take a look at this new national poll showing Dr. Carson in first place with 29% of support. He has reached out and taken the frontrunner status away from Donald Trump. But Mr. Trump, who never misses an opportunity to boast about his number one status, says he's unfazed by this latest poll. He remained on the attack earlier today while signing copies of his new book. We're very different people. We have uh, very different qualities, and we are extremely different. And I'm different from all of the other candidates. Look, nobody can negotiate trade deals like me. Well, Newsweek recently published a cover story on Dr. Ben Carson. Emily Cadet is the author of that piece, and she joins us now from Washington. Hi, Emily. Hi, Vlad. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. So it sounds like Trump is trying to separate himself from Dr. Carson. Is that strategy working? Uh, it doesn't seem to be at the moment, given where the polls are. I certainly agree that they're two very different people, but I think they have a similar appeal to the electorate in the sense that they're both very far from sort of the mainstream politician, if you will. So they're, they're appealing to the same types of people, and I think the more Carson rises, for example, the more you're going to see Trump drop or vice versa. So I read your piece, and it's excellent. Everybody should go out and read it. But in case they haven't, uh, people haven't read it, you talked to a lot of folks who know Dr. Carson yeah. before he ran for president. So just paint us a picture. Who is he as a candidate? Well, I think um, we still don't know a lot about Dr. Carson, I think is the thing that's so interesting um, as we watch him rise in the polls. He's someone who, again, is not a politician by trade or uh, by training. Um, he's a doctor. He's an excellent pediatric neurosurgeon. He spent his life um, working on extremely difficult cases involving very sick children with brain disorders or, you know, he's famous for operating on Siamese twins, but he did a lot of other things. And one of the things that really struck me talking to people about him back um, during his career at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore is that it's much more than just operating on someone, um, you know, cutting someone open and working on their brain. A lot of what he did was working with people and he, he seemed to have a really strong human touch. And so it's, um, it's an interesting look at a man who's had sometimes some trouble communicating um, person to person, uh, at least in his news interviews. He seems to be very effective at it on the trail though. Yeah, so it's interesting. In your story, you have this really uh, interesting analogy where you said for a lot of people who have known Dr. Carson for many years before he decided to run for the presidency, he's almost like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Mm. A lot of the things, I mean, he is clearly a brilliant, brilliant doctor. He separated, conjoined twins. Uh, he has done so many things in the field of medicine, and yet he's right. gone on to make statements like going into prison, uh, people turn gay because of prison, saying that he wouldn't support a Muslim president. And a lot of the people People that know him say they're sort of surprised to see him say some of those things. Yeah, they say that's really out of keeping with his character, the man they knew. Um, they said he was an incredibly effective communicator with people um, in the medical field, um, that everyone wanted to work on his team because he was both very humble but also very good at incorporating a lot of different views, um, that he worked with all types of people from all walks of life. Um, so I think one thing that we still have to parse through is sort of where he gets these beliefs about people that he's cited in these interviews um, versus how he's interacted with people in his day-to-day -day life because they, they do seem very different and I think that's something that a lot of people who know him well from his previous life are having trouble reconciling with what they see on television. Yeah, Dr. Carson is a member of the church. He's a Seventh-day Adventist uh, which has a very strict literal interpretation mm -hmm. of the Bible but then he says that uh, he wouldn't trust a Muslim uh, leader to lead this country uh, and it just reminded me of sort of the same thing that President John F. Kennedy heard when he was running for right. president uh, because a lot of people believe that Catholics take their orders from the Pope that he wouldn't be a good president. I wonder though if he's ever been pressed about his beliefs vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the country and how that may be played out or how that might be perceived by other people who are not supportive of him. Yeah, you know, I actually asked him about the Kennedy analogy when I spoke with him, um, and he, he didn't see uh, the similarity there. He said mm. that Muslims have a different 
worldview or lifestyle that's um, that's different than, say, a Catholic belief system. You know, personally, I do think um, there are similarities about you know concerns about who the higher authority is that a religious person would answer to. Um, obviously, Carson himself is very religious, um, and while the Seventh Day Adventist Church is not evangelical, he seems to be embraced by a lot of evangelicals because there are similarities in terms of some of that literalist interpretation of the Bible, for example. And just one last question on Dr. Trump and on your piece before we move on to some of the other uh, issues facing the politics today. Um, I'm also very curious, uh, we talked a little bit about his faith and how he sees uh, the rest of the world. Uh, how much of uh, an impact has his faith had on him? He said that when he was a younger man, he, was, he had a very volatile temper, mm -hmm. right? Right, and he writes about it in his um, memoir, uh, how he was having trouble controlling his temper. He was afraid he was going to hurt a friend, um, and he prayed, and it finally helped him control his temper. So, I mean, his faith, it very clearly, when you talk to him, when you read his book, this is infuses his worldview, um, even more than being a doctor, than being a scientist. He was a, you know, religious man first, um, since he was a child, and so it very much shapes how he sees things, whether it's creationism and how the world was formed or how he looks at how people should handle adversity. Um, it's a very important part of his life, and I think um, it's an interesting window. In